BC, Everyone Funding Startups Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Bivens. Thanks for joining us today. With us on the show is Marcus Lampinen, the COO of Grow VC and the former host of this show. So great to have you back on, Marcus. Uh, it's great to be on. It's, it's a little weird, actually, be on, being on the other side of the table, but <laughs> I, guess, uh, I guess it's kind of homecoming since it's been like, I think, has it been a month or a month and a half? It's been something probably like about, a, about a month and a half. And to make it a little even more weird, I'm going to... Uh, going to give an introduction to you, uh, kind of give a little background on you on the, on the show that you founded. So uh, Marcus is he's an internationally award-driven entrepreneur, uh, you know, a lot of international background and just a diverse education in economics and technology. So he's founded companies of his own, held advisory roles in multiple organizations, and he sits on the boards of uh, several growing companies. Uh, right now, Marcus manages the global operations uh, for Grow VC, and he's involved in really all levels of Grow VC's activity. So, really, I mean, who better to have on the podcast to uh, discuss, you know, crowdfunding and entrepreneurship than Marcus? So, as the year wraps up, what I wanted to do was give the listeners both a review of the crowdfunding market and a look ahead to what's in store for both crowdfunding and for Grow VC in the near future. So, if that sounds good with you, Marcus, we'll just jump right in. Uh, that sounds great. One thing, actually, before we begin, because I realize that we haven't been on the podcast at the same time, so we haven't had a chance to properly introduce you either. So especially now that you're actually in Bangalore in India, I think it's very appropriate that you also give a little bit of a background in terms of where you come from and what you're doing in Bangalore. Sure, sure. So uh, recently moved to Bangalore, as, as Marcus mentioned, uh, for a position with a startup called Crossover Intelligence which is a, a video information and a video analysis uh, company, and I'm the uh, director of operations with this company. Prior to this, I worked uh, in the financial sector and also have uh, you know, sat on the board with, uh, with a microfinance organization in Chicago. So I've always had an interest in crowdfunding and in, in you know, kind of alternative forms of finance. So that's the reason I, I jumped on board with Grow VC, and I've, I've really enjoyed my time so far. All right, that's good. So, uh, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you there, but uh, you can just continue from there. No, so yeah, like I mentioned, uh, you know, really want to give the the viewers and the, I mean, the listeners, I guess, a bit of a review of the crowdfunding market. So, uh, since you're such an expert on the topic, Marcus, could you maybe give uh, some people who might not have been following closely just kind of a kind of a background on the evolution of of the crowdfunding market and specifically equity crowdfunding in the past year? Hmm, sure. Um, let me actually take an even longer perspective because uh, last year a lot has happened. But if we look at from kind of where we've come from with, as as an organization with Grow VC, um, looking back uh, when we started three years ago, this space was very very different. So in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when we started looking into this space, doing the legal work, setting up the framework, the global framework, and all these things, it was um, especially since the economy was still not as it hadn't gone through all this rubble that it's gone through now it was maybe something that people didn't intrinsic they, they really didn't get it right away nowadays when you talk with people everybody gets it everybody gets why crowdfunding or alternative ways of startup funding everybody gets why they're important everybody gets why we need a different sort of system why the system that we have right now doesn't work but three years ago it wasn't that apparent to everybody so I see definitely there's been a lot of change in the last three years, but even the last year, there's been a huge pickup in terms of this entire market. And of course, that doesn't mean that the, the mass market or the mainstream is 2012 or even kind of uh, 2013, because we just don't know. And of course, it's uh, an ambiguous term as well, what is the mainstream. But still, this is a market that doesn't have, happen overnight, because in a way, what we started doing with Grow VC, it was always kind of looking at the early stages of companies and looking at their problems to obtain funding. Because you have the problem on both sides. You have great startup companies that look for finance at the early stages, but because the early stage is such a problem, they have a hard time looking for, invest, uh, looking for investors or finding the right investors. But at the same time, you have investors that are looking for the high-risk, high-reward targets. 
uh, but they just can't find them. So you really have a flip problem in a way. Uh, it's a problem of matchmaking, but it's also a global problem that we see. I think, especially in the last year on the high level, it's got a lot more recognition. It's got a lot more support. Just if we look at the discussions going on in the U.S. right now in terms of what they're talking about in Senate this week, it's, um, I mean, if we don't look at that too specifically, just the fact that people are talking about amending regulation in this space, it's already a huge deal. The fact that Obama came out with the American Jobs Act that highlighted crowdfunding as an important point to address, that was already huge. And given that our time perspective is always very long, we don't look for an overnight win or we don't look for something that would kind of give us a short-term victory, but we're in this for the, the long haul. Then just the fact that people are actually looking at the space, they're actually addressing the issues, they actually realize why this is important, and there's something moving there. I mean, sure, we don't know the outcome, we don't know the shape and form of what it will look like once it actually passes through that funnel, but just the fact that people are talking about that means that it's growing in its significance. And of course, in the U.S., the fact that Congress talks about something, it reverberates over lots of different fields, lots of different discussions, and people kind of start to look at this as, um, as an interesting new field, not just in terms of the entrepreneurs. Of course, there's been lots of activity in terms of new companies emerging or looking into this space or something in the ambiguous space of crowdfunding, but also from the other point of view, in terms of uh, investors looking for alternative ways to participate in deals. So I think there's definitely been a growing uh, awareness in terms of the space, but just the fact that it moves slowly, I think that's also a beneficial thing because, I mean, obviously, if it moved very quickly, that'd be great for us as well. That's fine. But just the fact that it's moving forward, I think that's the most important point. Okay, yeah. that's a little bit of a babble. Is that, that what you're looking for? No, absolutely. I think, that was, I think that was great, and that was a great overview of kind of the history behind it because I know that a lot of people didn't really have much of a uh, much knowledge of the space even you know at the beginning of this year, like you said. So the fact that the United States government has been, been working on things to try to push things through, and they've been, you know, I guess, investing in micro or investing in crowdfunding. So, um, yeah, that's, that's huge for, for that word to get out. And that, that word has, has now kind of gotten out around the world. And there are, you know, there are markets in, in Africa and South America, Asia, Europe, which is a bit more mature, and now the United States, who are, who are all finding out more about crowdfunding and, you know, finding out how they can use it to fund their startups properly. So, I mean, I guess I kind of touched on it there, but how, how do you see, uh, you know, crowdfunding being used in emerging markets especially within the last year, because uh, this is something that can have such a huge impact on companies in those areas. Definitely. But I think it's also part of a global movement in general. Um, I think there's so many forces at play right now. There's the economy that happened last year or during the last couple of years, and that's really opened people's eyes to realizing that this, this old system doesn't really fix everything, and it might not be the most beneficial system for us in all instances or in all cases. So I think that also plays into governments and different kind of different support systems looking into the startup space. Because many people see entrepreneurship as kind of the driver of, of economic growth, which is a, kind of like an obvious statement nowadays. But I think really on a global level, lots of governments, lots of different actors have started putting a lot of more emphasis on entrepreneurship. So this, of course, means that, great, there's going to be lots of entrepreneurs, there's going to be lots of focus on that, but entrepreneurs, especially those that create high-growth companies, are going to need funding because there's lots of talk about you know, entrepreneurs making it anyway, but the fact of the matter is that if you have an entrepreneur or just cross the board, entrepreneurs really do need that funding to actually get off the ground and create those jobs and get to that point that they can actually kind of prove themselves. So especially with regions like, let's say, let's look at Africa, some places of South America, and then Asia, I think there's huge opportunities. I mean, Kenya is one case that we talk about a lot. Um, we have one person from our own team, uh, Matia, Mandela, uh, Matia Mandela, who's there. He's definitely been a great person on the ground. He's a uh, kind of put us in touch with the pulse in the market there. Of course, mobile is huge in Kenya. But just the fact that there's innovations coming out of Kenya that 
can virtually revolutionize different spaces 